Good afternoon and welcome to a joyful journey from priest to bishop. Live from the Cathedral of St. Joseph in Hartford, I'm Father John Gatzak, Director of Radio and Television for the Archdiocese of Hartford and General Manager of WJMJ Radio, welcoming you and also welcoming my co-host here, Maria Zone, who is the Communications Director for the Archdiocese of Hartford. Maria, this is truly a joyful occasion because we're celebrating the Episcopal ordination of our new Auxiliary Bishop for the Archdiocese of Hartford, Bishop Juan Betancourt. It is a, it's a, a, an historic day, Father John. Thank you for having me with you today. Um, it's a joyous occasion. As you know, we are celebrating the 175th anniversary of the Archdiocese of Hartford this year. So what a way to celebrate it than with a brand new bishop. He will be the ninth auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Hartford. And he comes to us from St. Paul, in the Diocese of uh, St. Paul in, in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minneapolis yes. in Minnesota. And we want to welcome all of our viewers and our listeners from St. Paul, Minneapolis. And those especially um, where Padre Juan was, the, was a seminary professor and also a parish priest. priest. And I think, Father, there's excitement everywhere that you go, but there's a special bit of enthusiasm among the Hispanic population of the Archdiocese of Hartford because Padre Juan Miguel was born in Ponce, Puerto Rico. He has been a priest for 17 years, and as you said, right before coming to Hartford, he was an instructor of the seminarian, so he is a teacher. And uh, unfortunately, while we are celebrating with great joy, I understand the, the people at St. Paul, Minneapolis, are much saddened to lose such a wonderful, talented man. They a man of God, a man certainly that we're going to celebrate and rejoice with today. And this is a special day because it is also the feast of St. Luke the Evangelist. So the church is celebrating St. Luke the Evangelist, which is an appropriate day for this Episcopal ordination for Bishop Betancourt because of the fact that he was a seminary professor, a professor of sacred scripture. We are very lucky to have him, um, Father John. I've spoken to some of those people from the Diocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis, and they just expressed to me sadness to see him go. And I felt a little guilty because all I'm experiencing right now is happiness and joyfulness. I've met uh, Bishop Elect Betancourt prior to today, and he's just filled with um, compassion. He is very spiritual. He's youthful, he's vibrant, and and I just think he's the greatest. Well, we can expect to see many bishops here celebrating with Bishop Battencourt and also priests of the Archdiocese of Hartford and beyond. Special to our occasion today will be the presence of the Papal Nuncio, Archbishop Christoph Pierre, who is the Vatican's ambassador to the United States. He is bearing the decree from Pope Francis that names Father Juan Miguel Betancourt to be the new Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Hartford. His appointment comes following the retirement last December of Bishop Christy Macaluso. And we also have another Auxiliary Bishop who is Bishop Auxiliary Bishop Emeritus, Bishop Peter Rosaza. He is here in attendance with us today. And Father John, from the Diocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis, we have the Auxiliary Bishop, his name is Andrew Cousins, as well as the Archbishop of Military Services, Timothy Broglio. And both of these men, Father John, mean a lot to Bishop-elect Betancourt. He went to school with, um, with Auxiliary Bishop uh, Cousins, and they are here to support him in so many ways. And now we can see as the, the altar was incensed and the, the main, the principal celebrant of this Mass today is of course Archbishop Leonard Blair, the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Hartford. He will be the uh, ordaining bishop and co-consecrators who will be with us today as well. Yes, the co-consecrators as you mentioned, Father John, are Auxiliary Bishop the Andrew of Father, Cousins, as and well of as Son, uh, and of the Tinnip Holy Tinnip. Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And in your spirit. 
Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, on this happy day in the 175-year history of the Archdiocese of Hartford, it's a great joy for me to welcome in our midst our new auxiliary bishop-elect, Juan Miguel Betancourt. A very welcome, warm welcome also goes to his parents and other family members and to all who have journeyed to Hartford for the Episcopal ordination of a dear friend, mentor, colleague, or esteemed brother in consecrated life. In keeping with the ancient tradition of the church, I am joined by two co-consecrators for the rite of Episcopal ordination, Archbishop Timothy Brolio and Bishop Andrew Cousins. The Archdiocese is honored by your presence today. And finally, on behalf of us all, I wish to acknowledge the presence of Pope Francis's personal representative to both the Church and the government of the United States, the Most Reverend Archbishop Christophe Pierre Apostolic Nuncio. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your honored presence here today and please convey to the Holy Father our profound gratitude for the appointment of a new auxiliary bishop and the assurance of our prayers. En este feliz día en la historia de los 175 años de la arquidiócesis de Hartford, es una gran alegría para mí recibir en medio de nosotros nuestro nuevo obispo auxiliar Juan Miguel Betancourt. También lo quiero dar una calurosa bienvenida a sus padres y otros miembros de la familia y a todos los que han viajado a Hartford para, para la ordenación episcopal de un amigo querido, mentor, colega o estimada hermano en la vida consagrada. Siguiendo la antigua tradición de la Iglesia, soy acompañado por dos co-consagrantes para el rito de la ordenación episcopal, el arzobispo Timothy Brolio y el obispo Andrew Cousins. La arquidiócesis es honrada por su presencia hoy. Y finalmente, de parte de todos nosotros, Quiero reconocer la presencia del representante personal del Papa Francisco ante la Iglesia y el go gobierno de los Estados Unidos, el arzobispo Christophe Pierre, el nuncio apostólico. Gracias a usted, su excelencia, por su honorada presencia aquí hoy. Y por favor, com comuni comunique al Santo Padre nuestra profunda gratitud por el nombramiento de un nuevo obispo auxiliar y la aseguranza de nuestras oraciones. Please stand. As we gather for this very solemn, joyful, and important occasion, let us begin by acknowledging our sins and so preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Lord God, who chose St. Luke to reveal by his preaching and writings the mystery of your love for the poor, grant that those who already glory in your name may persevere as one heart and one soul, and that all nations may merit to see your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Demas, enamored of the present world, deserted me and went to Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Luke is the only one with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is helpful to me in the ministry. I have sent Tychicus to, to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left with Carpus and Troas, the papyrus rolls, and especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. You too be on guard against him, for he has strongly resisted our preaching. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The word of the Lord.
Dichoso el pueblo que sabe aclamarte. Caminará, oh Señor, a la luz de tu rostro. Tu nombre es su gozo cada día. Tu justicia es su orgullo. Cantaré eternamente las misericordias del Señor. Cantaré eternamente las misericordias. This is Ana Maria Hernandez Alstrom, the director of Hispanic Catechesis for the Archdiocese of Hartford. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a Timoteo. Querido hermano, que nadie te desprecie por tu juventud. Procura ser un modelo para los fieles en tu modo de hablar y en tu conducta. Let no one have contempt for your youth, but set an example for those who believe in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Until I arrive, attend to the reading, exhortation, and teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was conferred on you through the prophetic word with the imposition of hands of the presbyterate. Be diligent in these matters. Be absorbed in them so that your progress may be evident to everyone. Attend to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in both tasks. For by doing so, you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. The word of the Lord.
procession takes place now with the Book of the Gospels. The Gospel will be proclaimed by Deacon Anthony Federico. And this Gospel is from the Gospel of Luke, appropriately so, on this feast of St. Luke the Evangelist. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. And the choir will now sing Vene Creator Spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit, come.
Most Reverend Father, the Holy Catholic Church, our Mother, asks you to ordain this priest, Juan Miguel Betancourt, to the office of bishop. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. And now the Most Reverend Christoph Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States of America, will read the Apostolic Mandate, appointing Bishop Battencourt. Archbishop Blair, Archbishop Mansell, and Archbishop Conin, <coughs> Your Excellencies, Archbishop Bolio and Bishop Cosens, Your Excellencies, Bishops Malacuso and Rosazza, Your Excellency Auxiliary Bishop Elect, Juan Miguel Betancourt Torres, my brother archbishops and bishops, <coughs> dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful of the Archdiocese of Hartford, dear friends. This afternoon, I am truly pleased to be with you on the eve of the 175th anniversary year of this beloved Archdiocese. As Father Juan Miguel Betancourt Torres is ordained to the fullness of the priesthood and begins his ministry as auxiliary bishop and close collaborator of, to the chief shepherd of this local church, Archbishop Leonard Blair. Father Juan Miguel, when the staff and seminarians of uh, St. Paul Seminary School of Divinity received the news of your Episcopal appointment, their testimony indicates how you will serve as shepherd. They commented oh, on your sense of humor, your compassion, your joy, your ability to connect pastorally and personally with people, that you are a man of integrity and holiness, but there was one observation that struck home to me. It was what Monsignor Aloysius Callaghan, I don't know where he is, Rector Emeritus, said about your tireless effort at the seminary. I quote, it's a big loss for the seminary. It's like losing, losing an arm. I think he's a wonderful priest. He's dynamic. The Energizer Bunny would lose a job trying to keep up with him. We pray for you as a consecrated religious through the intercession of St. Luke, the evangelist whose feast the church celebrates today. St. Luke gave us the gospel message and proclaimed Christ as the dawn from on high. This was in the morning prayer, antiphon for the canticle of Zechariah. In your faithful Episcopal ministry, may you do the same for the portion of the Lord's vineyard, radiating the good news, especially for those suffering materially and spiritually. And now, with great joy, I will read for you a translation of the apostolic letter of appointment. This letter will be shown to you by the bishop. It's written in Latin, but this is a translation. Bishop, Fra Fra Francis Bishop, servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Juan Miguel Betancourt Torres, a member of the Institute of the Servants of the Holy Eucharist and of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and until now, pastor of St. Francis de Sales and uh, St. James Parish in the Archdiocese of St. Paul and Minneapolis, appointed auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Hartford, and at the same time promoted to the two titular see of Cursola, greetings and apostolic blessing. We will most gladly spend 
and be utterly spent for the souls of Christ's faithful, providing the light of the true world for the sake of people's enlightenment and uh, serving them out of love of the gospel, the payment for which stewardship is to be expected only from the Lord. Sustained by the tr this trust in God, with confidence in our great responsibility for directing the universal flock of Christ, as well as in the logic of the apostolic mandate, we now look to the pastoral needs of the ecclesial community of Hartford, whose ordinary, our venerable brother, Leonard Paul Blair, not very long ago requested that he might have the benefit of an auxiliary bishop to assist in the governance of diocesan life. Accordingly, we turn our thoughts to you, beloved son. The many accomplishments you have achieved in ecclesial matters, the outstanding reputation you have acquired as a result of this, as well as both the spiritual and human qualities you have developed, all of these things in our judgment render you suitable for carrying out this office. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops by our apostolic authority, we appoint you Auxiliary Bishop of Hartford and Titular Bishop of Cursola, granting to you all the due rights and imposing the relative obligations which are connected to this office. You may receive Episcopal ordination anywhere outside the city of Rome. This is not anywhere, Archbishop. <laughs> the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in accordance with the norms of ecclesiastical law. Finally, beloved son, may you carry out every aspect of your apostolic ministry in unity and harmony with the chief shepherd of this local church, and God willing, may you always be a shepherd whose heart is shaped by mercy. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the 18th day of the month of September, in the year of the Lord, 2018, the sixth of our pontificate. And this is signed, Francis. That's the reading of the apostolic letter, the apostolic mandate signed by Pope Francis authorizing the ordination, the Episcopal ordination of Juan Miguel Betancourt. Impressive, huh, Maria? Very impressive, and one wonders, Father John, what on earth is he thinking right now? Is he experiencing just full joy? Is he nervous? I just, um, again, I think that the Archdiocese is blessed to have him. As you heard the Apostolic Nuncio describe him, he's an energizer bunny. He's enthusiastic and he's going to And there you, there you see, Maria, the, the papal bull, as it is sometimes yes. called, the mandate. And Bishop-elect Betancourt is showing it now. We'll show it to the entire congregation including all the priests of the Archdiocese of Hartford. There are over a hundred of them here. And he looks very happy. So by paper, papal bull, we mean a charter from Pope Francis. And now he's showing it to the his family, family believe, his family the there. Who and everyone, everyone that is here. Very, very impressive. Body. And the Pope saying, and the Pope saying that he has a heart shaped by mercy, and may that truly be the trademark of his entire Episcopal ministry, having a heart shaped by mercy. 
Father, you've attended several of these. This is my first Episcopal ordination, and I have to say that I am very impressed by it all. It is a very, very impressive ceremony, one that brings a lot of joy and hope to all the people of the Archdiocese of Hartford and beyond, not only the individuals that are lucky enough to be present here to witness this in person, but I'm sure the joy that Bishop Betancourt, or soon to be Bishop Betancourt, will share with all of the people of the Archdiocese. Truly contagious, Maria, truly contagious. And he's a very educated and smart man. He's multilingual, Father. He speaks Spanish, English, Italian, has proficiency in German and French. My dear brothers and sisters, in just a few moments, I will offer the solemn prayer of Episcopal ordination over our brother, Juan Miguel Betancourt. The prayer includes a phrase already found in an ancient text known as the apostolic tradition. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day. May he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood. To serve God night and day by shepherding the flock without reproach and with a heart that lies open before God, this is the call of service that our brother Juan Miguel assumes today. We're grateful for the grace offered by God and freely and generously accepted by him to embrace the call to be a bishop. The words and symbols of the rite of ordination that we will hear and see in just a few moments provide a catechesis about the high calling that he has received and what is expected of him as a result. Queridos hermanas y hermanas, en unos pocos minutos ofreceré la solemne oración de ordenación episcopal sobre nuestro, nuestro hermano Juan Miguel Betancourt. Las palabras y los símbolos del rito de ordenación que vamos a observar y ver proporciona una catequesis sobre el alto llamada que ha recibido y lo que se espera de él como resultado. In the apostolic exhortation, Pastores Gregis, Pope St. John Paul says this, relying on the word of God and holding firmly to hope, which is like a sure and steadfast anchor reaching to the heavens, the bishop stands in the midst of the church as a vigilant sentinel, a courageous prophet, a credible witness, and a faithful servant of Christ. The theological virtue of hope was very much on the mind of the late great pontiff at the turn of the millennium. And in our time, it is more urgent than ever that a bishop truly be a servant of the gospel for the hope of the world. For this to happen, Pope St. John Paul says that first, a bishop must be a vigilant sentinel and keep watch over the flock, as symbolized by the pastoral staff, the crozier, which a bishop carries. As the New Testament bears witness, beginning with our Lord's own warning in the gospel, we've just heard from Luke, whose feast day it is, the wolf is very real, ready to snatch the sheep at every opportunity. At the end of the sixth century, Pope St. Gregory the Great, 
posed a question that every bishop must ask himself. What kind of sentinel am I, positioned on the heights, to take a wide view so that Christ's sheep may safely graze and be brought safely home, keeping the wolf at bay? Many are the charismatic figures that God raises up at crucial moments in church history to effect some much-needed reform, to open up a new path in spiritual and devotional life, or to reinvigorate consecrated life. This includes many, many sainted bishops. But as the Second Vatican Council reaffirmed, the mission that is proper to bishops consists in reverently safeguarding and courageously proclaiming the Catholic faith with patience and sound teaching. That is why in just a few moments, our brother Juan Miguel will be asked if he is resolved to guard the deposit of faith entire and incorrupt as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times. En unos pocos momentos se le pedirá a nuestro hermano Juan Miguel si está resuelto a guardar el depósito de la fe entero e incorrupto como pasado por los apóstoles y preservada en la iglesia in qualquier lugar e in todo momento. Then there's the challenge of being a courageous prophet. In the scriptures, a prophet is not principally one who tells the future, but one appointed and strengthened by God to summon the people to conversion and fidelity when they have forgotten their divine calling or have strayed as the people of God. In our day, an essential aspect of a bishop's prophetic office is that of modeling what Pope Francis calls missionary discipleship. It is the mission each of us has to know, live, and bear witness to the faith, so that echoing the words of St. Paul in our first reading, through us, the proclamation of the gospel may be completed in the world. This prophetic mission and witness also includes the promotion of justice and peace in civil, social, economic, and ecological spheres, and concern for the poor, the sick, the immigrant, and the stranger. Our new bishop is being asked whether he is resolved not only to seek out the stray and to admonish, but also to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity. Nuestro nuevo obispo se le está pidiendo hoy si está resuel resuelto no solo a buscar los extraviados y amonestar, pero también para predicar el evangelio de Cristo con constancia y fidelidad. What can we say about the next requirement of a bishop, that he be a credible witness? My brothers and sisters, I do not need to tell you about the grievous wounds that afflict the church's bishops at the present moment. Credibility is a precious thing, and once lost sight by betrayal and scandal, it is recovered only through heartfelt contrition and penance and with time, patience, perseverance, and the grace of God. We who are bishops need to heed the words of the renowned French writer, Georges Bernanos. The only way of reforming the church, he says, is to suffer for her. The only way of reforming the vices of the church is to lavish on her the example of one's own most heroic virtues. In Pastores Gregis, Pope John Paul says that a bishop will only be pastorally effective 
if he possesses a moral authority bestowed by a life of holiness. By his words and example, the Pope writes, and in his vigilance and paternal intervention, the bishop fulfills his duty to offer the world the reality of a church which is holy and chaste in her ministers and in her faithful, holy and chaste in her ministers and in her faithful. The Episcopal ring to be placed on Bishop-elect Betancourt's finger carries with it the admonition to preserve unblemished the Bride of Christ, the Holy Church. And the mitre is placed on his head with the expectation that the splendor of holiness will shine forth in him. In a sermon preached in the year 412, St. Augustine asks, are there bad bishops? No, there are not, he answers. I venture, venture to say with absolute certainty, there are no bad bishops, because if they are bad, they are bishops in name only, but not in fact. Theirs is an empty title. Whatever we bishops are like, Augustine tells his congregation, your hope must not be in us. Your hope must not be in our humanity. All your hope must be in the Lord Jesus Christ. On this joyful day for our archdiocese and for the whole church, we have every confidence that our brother Juan Miguel stands before us as a man of virtue, integrity, and honor, who will truly be, and not just seem to be, a holy bishop with the heart and mind of Jesus Christ. En este día alegre para nuestra arquidiócesis y para toda la iglesia, tenemos toda confianza que nuestro hermano Juan Miguel se encuentra ante nosotros como hombre de virtud, integridad y honor, quien será verdaderamente y no solo, a, solo para ser un obispo santo con el corazón y la mente de Jesucristo. Finally, the bishop is a faithful servant of Christ. As the ordination ritual tells us, the title of bishop is one of service, not of honor, and therefore a bishop should strive to benefit others rather than lord it over them. Such is the precept of the master, the greater should behave as the least, and the ruler as the servant. In that spirit, our brother resolves today, for the sake of the Lord's name, to be a servant of all, welcoming and merciful to great and small alike, and especially to the least among us. And so, Bishop-elect Juan Miguel Betancourt, we pray that God will bless you with many happy and healthy years. In the name of the Father, whose image you will represent in the church, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, whose office of teacher, priest, and shepherd you will discharge, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the Church of Christ, and by his power strengthens us to overcome our weaknesses and to meet every challenge for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. Y entonces, Obispo Electo Juan Miguel, Oramos que Dios lo bendiga con muchos años felices y sanos. En el nombre del Padre, cuya imagen presentará en la iglesia, en el nombre del Hijo Jesucristo, cuyo oficio de maestro, sacerdote y pastor descargará, y en el nombre del Espíritu Santo, que da vida a la iglesia de Cristo, y por su poder nos fortalezca a superar nuestras debilidades y enfrentar todos los desafíos para la gloria de Dios y la salvación de almas.
And now after those words by Archbishop Blair, the rite of ordination will take place. And Archbishop Blair, in a, in a very short and, but beautiful, beautiful homily, spoke about serving God night and day without reproach, calling the bishop to be a servant of the gospel for the hope of the world. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, dear brother, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of our hands? I do. Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith entire and incorrupt as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in the unity of that body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons? I do. Do you resolve, for the sake of the Lord's name, to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need? I do. Do you resolve, as a good shepherd, to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. And so the bishop-elect has promised to preach the gospel, to dis discharge the office entrusted to him, to guard the deposit of faith, to build up the body of Christ, his church, to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed apostle Peter, to guide the people of God in the way of salvation. He has resolved to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers and to all who are in need, to seek out the sheep who stray, to bring them back, and to pray without ceasing. So be it resolved. Dear beloved, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the church will grant an abundance of his grace for this chosen one. Let us kneel. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The prostration is a very solemn position for prayer. In this litany of supplication, we all pray for our new to be auxiliary bishop, Bishop Benton Court. It's a beautiful prayer, Maria. It certainly is. And Father, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the same ritual that priests who are ordained go through, the same, correct? The same litany prayer, yes. Say 
of Antioch, St. Lawrence, St. Perpetua and St. Felicity, St. Agnes, St. Gregory, St. Augustine, St. Athanasius, Saint Martin, Saint Benedict, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, Saint Francis Xavier, Saint John Vianney, Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. Saint Louis of Montfort, Saint John of the Cross, Saint Therese of Lisieux, Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, Saint Juan Diego. Saint Paul the Sixth, Saint John Paul the Second, Saint Oscar Romero, Blessed Karl Leisner, Blessed Miguel Agustin Pro, Blessed Solanus Casey. Blessed Stanley Rother, Blessed Carlos Manuel Rodriguez, all holy men and women, saints of God. Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to our sinners, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. This chosen man, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, 
graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace, through Christ our Lord. And so we have petitioned all the heroes of the church, the saints, to on behalf of Bishop to be Betancourt, that they protect him and guide him in his new ministry. And now the solemn moment of ordination, the laying on of hands. The Archbishop and then the co-consecrators lay hands upon the new bishop. And now all the bishops in attendance will have the same opportunity to lay hands upon the newly ordained Bishop Betancourt. This is calling down the Holy Spirit upon him, that the Holy Spirit be with him, guide him, protect him, give him the strength and the courage that he needs to keep all those resolutions that he made in faith, in hope, and in love. Let me share with you some words of Pope Francis that have a direct bearing on the essence of what an ordination of a priest, or in this case, the Episcopal ordination of a bishop means today. For this is the source of energy that feeds the joy that Bishop Betancourt feels today and will feel throughout his Episcopal ministry. Pope Francis says, joy is born from the graciousness of an encounter. It comes from hearing someone say, not necessarily with words, you are important to me. And it is these very words that God uses to make us understand who. In calling out to you, God says, you are important to me. I love you, I am counting on you. Jesus says this to each one of us, joy is born from that. That is the joy of an encounter with Jesus. Understanding and hearing this is the secret of our joy. Feeling loved by God, feeling that we are not just numbers to him, but individual souls, feeling that it is he, he who is calling us. Becoming a priest is not really our own decision, it doesn't work that way. Rather, it is the response to a call, to a call of love. I feel something within me, something stirring and moving, and I answer, yes. It is a prayer that the Lord makes us feel his love, but also through many signs that we can read in our lives, in the many people he sets on our path, and the joy of the encounter with him and of hearing his call does not lead to shutting oneself in, but to opening oneself up, it leads to service in the church. And so we pray that the service to the church, to God's people, by Bishop Betancourt, may bear fruit in the lives of all the faithful. Father, some of our viewers might be surprised to know that this man was on a path to becoming a pharmacist and in his sophomore year of college, got this strong calling from the Lord. And here he is now at 48, becoming the ninth auxiliary bishop of Hartford. The book of the gospels is held, the book of the gospels is held over his head. 
and that book is turned to a specific gospel, the Gospel of John, the Good Shepherd account. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who laid down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation of the just, born of Abraham, who established rulers and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundation of the world were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Pour out now upon this chosen one that power which is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son, Jesus Christ, the spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary, for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this, your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day, may he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever and ever. Open to the 10th chapter of St. John's Gospel. The Gospel says, I am the Good Shepherd. I will lay down my life for my sheep. What an appropriate verse to be held over the head of Bishop Betancourt. He chose that himself. May God, who has made you a sharer of the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing (coughs) and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings. That's the anointing with sacred chrism. It was a generous anointing, Maria. Yes. And after the Archbishop washes his hands from the oil, he will present the book of the Gospels to Bishop Betancourt. And and the Gospels are so very, very important, not only for what they mean for all of us as individuals, but what they will specifically mean for Bishop Betancourt as he is called upon to not only preach the Gospels, preach the good news, but to live it within his own life. And I think that Archbishop Blair made that clear in his homily that in this day and age today, a bishop is truly called to be real, to be authentic, to live the life of the gospel, to proclaim it, and to show others by example exactly what it means to be a person of faith, 
hope, charity, and above all, love. Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre. And may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him the unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God.
y por la alianza nos eligió. And you got to believe, Maria, that it is because, uh, partly because of the, the inspiration and the love, the family background, the, the wisdom, the, uh, the whole way of life of mom and dad that have communicated this great devotion to God and to God's people to their son, who today now has made it this journey of joy from priest to bishop. These are his parents right now, Father John, there that I think are. are presenting the gifts. But you're right, he is definitely a product of his mother and father. They are people who help others before they help themselves and have always had their faith at the center of their life. How proud they must be this day. Es un día, una bendición para la familia. It's a day of blessings for the family. And speaking of family, Bishop Betancourt has two sisters, and Sister Gloria and Glor Gloria Mar. Gloria Mar. That's yeah. a beautiful name. Yeah, isn't it? it's different. But um, he has two sisters, as you said, and one is a teacher. I'm not sure what the other one does, but I think we mentioned earlier that his mother was a teacher of English and Spanish. And the father was a teacher in junior high school, and he taught science. So maybe that's where he got his love for the sciences. Maria, many were probably wondering what are the qualifications to be a bishop. And in regard to the suitability of a candidate for the episcopacy, it is required that he be a person of outstanding and solid in faith, have good morals, piety, zeal for souls, wisdom, prudence, and other human virtues and endowed with other qualities which make him suitable to fulfill the office. Also, he should have a good reputation. He should be at least 35 years old, ordained to the presbyterate, be a priest for at least five years, and have a, a, a good education, have a licentiate degree, perhaps in sacred scripture or theology or canon law. Which he does. These are all the qualities that, that certainly Bishop Betancourt has and is found to be through a, a, a very secretive vetting process to have all these qualities and more. It's an extensive process that a man who is, who is chosen to be bishop goes through before, before the Pope uh, will, will name an individual priest a bishop. I would imagine it's, not, it's no easy task, and based on the criterion that you just read, it's uh, not easy to become a bishop. And didn't you interview Bishop Bentecourt about um, what the process was? And I, I interviewed Archbishop Blair about Archbishop, the process, okay. and uh, we may have a little clip of, of Archbishop Blair. 
acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. <clears throat> we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on our brother, unworthy as he may be, may be graciously brought to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servant, Juan Miguel Betancourt, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in him, so that what he has received by divine commission, he may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Maria, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Father John. This is such a joyous occasion, and now the community sharing a sign of peace with one another, the fraternity that binds us all together in our faith in celebrating this. And you can see the joy on Bishop Battencourt's face. Yeah? And Archbishop Blair, now he has another person, capable person who can help him with all of the pastoral needs of our archdiocese. I'm sure he's very proud and, and, and very joyous in, in that now he's able, as you say, to have an assistant, somebody to, to, to help him um, as we move forward in faith and in building up the, uh, the, the church of the Archdiocese of Hartford. Here's a quote from Archbishop Blair upon Father Bentoncourt's appointment. He says, the appointment of Father Bentoncourt is a ca cause of rejoicing, not only for me personally, but for all our clergy, religious and laity. For me and for our clergy, it means the welcome arrival of a dedicated coworker in the Lord's Vineyard who brings a variety of talent and experience to our shared ministry, end quote. I hope one of the things that we see is, is an opportunity for the, the entire archdiocese to meet Bishop Betancourt and see what a joyful individual he is and what a true shepherd he is. He is. Because um, it, 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 in the, the fact I've been blessed actually to have several opportunities already to meet with him and to interview him, but I think that the, the community of faith is going to be able to see um, exactly why Pope Francis appointed him as Auxiliary Bishop of Hartford. Well, again, Father John, I think already this weekend he may be um, celebrating a confirmation. And I can't remember. Right to work, <laughs> Yes, huh? exactly. I can't remember what parish, but he is right to work right away. And as people describe him, he's a bundle of energy. Um, he gives the Energizer Bunny a run for his money. So I think he will be out and about and meeting as many people as he can. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the Lamb, but only say the word in my soul.
Maria, as we take this opportunity to listen to some of the beautiful music that is being sung at communion time, let me just tell you about a little experience I had, and we'll hear from Archbishop Blair. Archbishop Blair and I, as you well know, Maria, we do a, a regular radio show together on WJMJ Radio. And during one of our radio sessions, I asked him to explain what it is that an auxiliary bishop does. What is an auxiliary bishop? What is it that he does? And here's Archbishop Blair's response now. Auxiliary, or sometimes just translated assistant bishop, it simply means that the work of a bishop in a large diocese is such uh, that sometimes it's necessary for the, the bishop to have an uh, assistant bishop. Just like in the parish, you have a pastor and you have uh, an associate pastor. If the parish is big enough, or sadly in our day, because we have a shortage of priests, very often we don't have many associate pastors to give to, to the parishes. It's really the same thing. The bishop, archbishop, is the chief pastor of the archdiocese, but in a diocese this size, to have someone associated with me as an associate bishop or auxiliary bishop is very helpful in carrying out all the duties that, that I have. First of all, to get an a bishop, auxiliary bishop appointed, you have to ask the Holy Father for this to be done. And so <clears throat> with the retirement of both of our former auxiliary bishops, Bishop Rezaza and Bishop Macaluso, I didn't ask for two, but I asked Pope Francis for one auxiliary bishop. And uh, once that is approved, that I can pursue that, then I have to submit names for consideration to the Holy See for a possible appointment as a bishop. And those are handled through the Apostolic Nuncio, that is the Pope's ambassador to the Church and Government of the United States in Washington. In this case, Archbishop, the current holder of that office is Archbishop Christophe Pierre in Washington, and then he forwards that through to the Congregation for Bishops in Rome. Uh, they vet these things and, and make a final recommendation, and then the Pope has to approve. The, uh, the Pope actually makes the appointment of a bishop. And so that's how the process goes. So I made the request some time ago. It's been, it takes a, a, a while for this to happen. And uh, the happy outcome is the ordination of our new auxiliary bishop, uh, Bishop Betancourt. And as Archbishop Blair just said, it is truly a happy outcome. Maria, it's incredible that um, it, actually this process begins, began as Archbishop Blair mentioned a while ago. The bishop of the, of the diocese submits names of priests that he thinks would make good bishops. And then it's up to the apostolic nuncio who plays a decisive role actually in the selection process. Great weight is given to the nuncio's recommendations. And then when the, the nuncio looks at the recommendations, he submits them to the congregation for bishops in Rome and uh, the appointment is of a priest to the episcopacy the the full congregation of uh, is is involved in vetting this whole process and looking at each of the candidates that are submitted um, and then they submit their findings to the pope and it is the pope who decides the prefect of the congregation of bishops presents the recommendations of the congregation to the holy father and actually a few days later the pope informs the congregation of his decision and then it's up to the nuncio himself in this case christophe pierre archbishop christophe pierre to make that telephone call to the the new bishop elect and he says that the holy father has chosen you to be a, a, a bishop and he has an opportunity to decide yes or no and the, the Vatican then is, is notified, a date is set for the, the ordination, and here we are on this beautiful day, October 18th, on the Feast of St. Luke, with this ordination of our new auxiliary bishop, Bishop Battencourt.
I think it's exactly one month today that uh, Pope Francis did make the announcement that he was going to be the new Bishop of Hartford. Uh, so a lot has transpired in that month. But I don't think, Father, right? Um, Bish uh, Bishop Bent Bentoncourt did not know he was one of the candidates up for no, no, his no. position. No one knows. So he you, was very surprised when yeah. he got the phone call. You, you, you never know if your name is submitted uh, as a candidate to be a, a bishop. You don't know until you get that, that call, which Bishop Betancourt has changed his entire life. Uh, I must l let our viewers and our listeners know that we are going to go beyond the our two-hour time, and uh, so stay with us because we're going to bring you more from Bishop Betancourt and as well as his own words. So we don't want to miss the, the words of our new bishop, our new auxiliary bishop. And speaking of words from our new auxiliary bishop, until a recent September morning, as we were saying, Father Betancourt was an administrator and an instructor at the St. Paul Seminary's School of Divinity. And he was also a pastor at a local church. And he was very surprised to get a phone call from the Vatican's ambassador with the word that the Pope had chosen him to be a bishop. I was very happy, you know, and, uh, and it was a big, uh, big of a surprise because, um, well, a new year at the seminary was starting with you know, the formation, the classes. The parish that um, I'm a pastor to was returning back to the normal fall routine, preparing the fall festival and everything. So um, that actually was you know, very important for me, and I didn't have in mind that I would get a phone call, you know, um, and then the Apostolic Nuncio asking you know, if I will be willing to serve as auxiliary bishop in Hartford. You know, and I was saying that it was, it was a very funny thing because he asked me immediately, do you know where that is? <laughs> and, and I just said, yes, it's in Connecticut. So, um, and then I just answered, well, Archbishop, I'm a man of a church. If, if the Holy Father and you think that I will do a good job in Hartford, I accept. So that actually was, it, it filled my heart with joy. But five seconds later, I was just really, what, what is happening, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm very grateful to the Lord, the Holy Father, and, um, and in the welcoming that you have given me here, you know, in my very first day here.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, O Lord, increase the gifts of your grace in Juan Miguel, your servant and bishop, that he may serve you worthily in the pastoral ministry and receive the eternal wards of a faithful steward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You could see, Maria, the little smile there when the mitre was put on his, his head. Eh? Yes, he's a full-fledged bishop. And the blessing now that he imparts. There's something special about receiving a blessing from a new priest, or in this case, a new bishop. Your brothers, it's, I'm, I'm just very moved right now, and I have the biggest smile on my you, face you, watching Not it. only do you have a smile on your face, you have tears in your eyes. It's very moving. It is, it truly is. It's truly a moment of, of, of happy joy. Yes. Blessing the congregation for the first time as Bishop Bentecourt. You see the young students there. They're all mesmerized by him. Oh, sure. and, and I think that you know, in his Episcopal ministry, he will have many opportunities to, to minister to young people and, and to to communicate with them in a language that they speak because he is such a, an energetic and young bishop. I agree. These are all elements that I think our past bishops, they just got older like we all do. So it's no, <laughs> you and I get old. No. <laughs> so it's nice to have someone a little younger that can run after them and keep up with them. I was speaking to one of uh, the auxiliary bishops that is here today. I'm not going to mention who he was, but uh, he and I went to school together in, in Rome. And he said, I asked him how he enjoys being an auxiliary bishop. And he says he absolutely loves it. He said that there is uh, many responsibilities that go with it, but he said if there's something that he doesn't want to do, he can, since he is, he's the auxiliary bishop, he can always say, well, you have to talk to the bishop of the diocese, <laughs> not me. Yes. And I just think, Father John, that Bishop Bentoncourt is such a relatable guy. He's very down to earth. He's humble. I mean, do you remember how he responded to one of our questions the other day when he said, Jesus spoiled everything for me? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And yes. translation is, I got the call and I heeded that call. But he's just very funny. I mean, here he was on his way to being a pharmacist and then, Jesus called on him, and he was ready, willing and, and able. And then now he's, he's a seminary professor. He's a pastor of a wonderful parish, the merging of two parishes together, an Anglo parish and a Hispanic parish together, and very comfortable in this position. And all of a sudden, Jesus interrupts him once again, and, and the Lord calls him to a new ministry, as, as an auxiliary bishop in the Archdiocese of Hartford. And when we asked him, 
When he was asked, do you know where Hartford is? He said, oh yeah, Connecticut. He knew exactly where it was because as we mentioned before, his, his mother was, uh, lived in Bridgeport for some time. But he had never visited no, until no, the announcement. This was the first time, yeah. This was his first time. What a grand celebration of joy throughout the entire cathedral. And we might mention that the Archdiocese of Hartford encompasses not only Hartford, of course, but the, the counties of Hartford and New Haven and Litchfield. Yes. So it's a spacious diocese. And we now are a we're an archdiocese that's now comprised of 128 parishes. I'm not sure how large the um, Diocese of St. Louis, Minneapolis was, but certainly they don't Saint have Paul. 120. What did I say, Father? I'm Saint sorry. St. Louis. Oh, sorry, St. Paul, Minneapolis. Um, but I'm sure it does not have 128 parishes. You, you, you can really tell that there is joy in this cathedral when you look at the faces of some of the priests and they are smiling. Yes. And I know for a fact he was very impressed by the cathedral when he first visited. He was in awe of our stained glass windows and um, I think that He's going to just enjoy celebrating Mass in the Mother Church of the Archdiocese. Look at him. He's so, I think, excited. great moment because this is the first time he will address this congregation, the people of faith of the Archdiocese of Hartford, as the new auxiliary bishop. Thank you for your presence and your prayers in this remarkable and joyful occasion. First and foremost, I thank God for the gift of Christian life and for the call to follow his son Jesus Christ as one of his priests. Being an ordained minister for his church has filled my life always with his joy and his peace. The Blessed Mother, our Mother Mary, has had an essential role in the development of my religious and priestly vocation. To be ordained a bishop in her special day is a sign of her care for all of us who love her and call her protection on our dear ones and on us. So let us echo her canticle of joy, the Magnificat, with our Christian lives. To Archbishop Pierre, I thank you for your faithful ministry. As apostolic news, you're here in the United States. As your presence reminds us of the closeness of Pope Francis to our Church of Hartford, like Archbishop Blair, I kindly ask you to convey to the Holy Father our love, our prayers, and the affection of the faithful in Hartford united with the, their Archbishop and leaders, as well as our gratitude for his ministry in our faithful communion with him. To Archbishop Hebda, Archbishop Brolio, Bishop Cousins, Archbishop Gonzalez, Bishop Hernandez, Bishop Pates, and my brother bishops here present, your warm and brotherly welcome to the Order of Bishops is encouraging and affirming. Thank you for your support and assistance. Your ministry inspires me to look for every opportunity to give myself to the Lord in the outreaching to everyone in need, especially of healing and reassurance. Archbishop Mansell, Archbishop Croning, Bishop Rosaza, Bishop Macaluso. It is an extraordinary grace and blessing to be assigned to this archdiocese that enjoys your wisdom in Christian witness. Please care and pray for me, the baby bishop. Archbishop Blair, my father, given to me by the Lord, I see in you a priest of Jesus Christ. 
I so look forward to le learning from you and assisting you serving the Church of Hartford with all the gifts the Lord has bestowed on me. I entrust myself to your prayers, your mentorship, your guidance, and your fatherly care. Well, he, Archbishop, has already entrusted me with the responsibility of our people. I have confirmations tomorrow evening. <laughs> I am so grateful to my family who is here with me today, my mom and dad, Miguel and Gloria. Si el Señor me ha llamado a este ministerio, es porque ha contado con el amor, la educación y el apoyo que solo unos padres como ustedes pueden dar. A mis hermanas Gloria y Glorimar, muchísimas gracias por siempre quererme y apoyarme. A mis tíos, mis tías, mis primos, who I grew up so close to, and those who are able to make it here today. I am so grateful for your encouragement and support. I love you so much. A la comunidad de los esclavos de la Eucaristía y de María Virgen, que el Señor y la Madre los premia cada uno con abundancia de gracia y nos haga llegar las vocaciones necesarias para que el carisma de nuestro Padre Aníbal Reyes siga siendo de mucho fruto para la Iglesia. A Padre Luis, a Padre Rolando, a Padre René, que me recibieron y me formaron como religioso y sacerdote de Jesucristo, así como a todos mis hermanos de Puerto Rico, Córdoba y St. Paul, los llevo en mi corazón con mucha gratitud y amor fraternal. My brother priests and deacons, from the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis, where my priesthood developed and matured. My brother priests and deacons of this great Archdiocese of Hartford, to whom I belong now, and all the visiting priests from other dioceses and religious communities, brothers, sisters, and all consecrated, I thank you for your faithfulness to Christ our Shepherd and your love for the Church. May the Lord always shine on you and give you his peace and may the Blessed Mother keep you ever close to her Immaculate Heart. I need to address my people of St. Paul in Minneapolis, especially my parishioners of St. Francis de Sales Church in St. Paul, all my staff and friends. I learned to be a pastor thanks to your love and care. The faculty and staff of the St. Paul Seminary School of Divinity, with whom I collaborated for more than 10 years, we shaped an exceptional family and team to form hundreds of seminarians and lay leaders. May the Lord repay all your efforts with his abundant love. My seminarians, all of you here, who made such an effort to be with me today, and to those in St. Paul watching this magnificent Eucharist, I greet you for the first time as a bishop, asking kindly for you to pray for your father, who was called by the Lord to serve in a new, vibrant, and extraordinary church. Be always generous in faith, love, and service for Christ and his bride at the church. I thank you. With that, Monsignor Callahan, your priestly example, your faithfulness, fatherhood, and mentorship has been essential in the Lord's plan for me and we see the fruit of your love for the Lord and his people in the formation of clergy and lay church leaders today. My friends from different stages of my life, grade school, high school, college, Rome, who are here, and those who have sent their greetings, prayers, and support through cards and social media, be assured of my prayers. I am grateful for your faithful friendship. My people, my family of Hartford, all represented here by parishes, schools, institutions, my new seminarians, the chancery and the cathedral staff. Archbishop Blair told me in the day of the announcement that I will get to love you because you are a people filled with love and joy. And I'm the newest one here. Please be patient as I get to learn my ways of service as your auxiliary bishop. The unexpected announcement that I received just a month ago is a sign of God's love for all of us. His presence in our lives should be our constant concern. Looking for him in prayer, in the reception of the sacraments, in our lives of self-giving with joy and hope is how the Lord dispels the darkness of sin, division, and despair, bringing healing, unity, and strength. 
Queridos todos, confiemos siempre en el Señor, que en su providencia nos ha dado a su bendita Madre, para que nos encomendemos a su protección y a su consejo. Aunque la Iglesia esté viviendo momentos bien difíciles, nosotros seguimos el llamado de fidelidad al Señor y a su Iglesia. Seamos fieles a Jesús en su palabra y acciones, y oremos unos por otros como una sola familia en el Señor. Y aunque muchos nos sintamos decepcionados y traicionados, la Iglesia pertenece a Jesús misericordioso y victorioso. Tenemos que perseverar en la fe, siguiendo el ejemplo de nuestra Madre bendita, que aún viendo a su Hijo morir en la cruz, tuvo fe en su triunfo sobre la muerte, y ahora es nuestra intercesora en la gloria de la resurrección. So, our call today is the one St. Luke says at the beginning of his gospel, to persevere in the truth of the love we have learned in faith. May the Lord bless you all, and the Blessed Mother care for you always. Thank you. Fantastic words of gratitude. Huh? Again, very humble, thanking everybody that has watched him grow as a priest and spoke to his Spanish from Puerto Rico in Spanish. And there was one sister father who was very overcome by Did emotion. you see that? I it know. brought tears to my eyes, too. It's a special day. And now words from Archbishop Blair. Before we take leave of this very joyful uh, celebration, I want to add my thanks to those of our new bishop, to all the many people who have devoted themselves to planning and preparing for this day. Archdiocesan Cathedral staff in particular, masters of ceremonies, musicians and readers, media personnel, uh, and also our seminarians and many others as well. Thank you all very much for making this such a happy day for our Archdiocesan family of faith and for all the relatives, friends, and guests of Bishop Betancourt. I want to repeat, too, that there is a reception for the new bishop immediately across the street at the Etna headquarters building, uh, to which you're all invited. And also, I would point out that there will be a rebroadcast of this liturgy on, uh, at 10 a.m. on WCCT television. So again, thank you all very much for sharing in this joy for our Archdiocese. As we now conclude by asking a final blessing for the Mass on our new Bishop and on all of us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and as his will to set you as high priest over his people, so may he make you happy in this present life and grant you a share in the happiness that is eternal. Amen. May he grant that the clergy and people he has chosen to unite by his gracious help be happily governed by his providence and your stewardship for many years to come. Amen. May they obey God's commandments freed from adversity, and may they abound in all that is good, submitting in faith to your ministry, so that they may enjoy peace and tranquility in the present age, and with you be found worthy to share the company of the citizens of eternity. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.
Maria, as he referred to himself, we have a new baby bishop in the Archdiocese of Hartford. It is a joyous day. And, and um, a beautiful smile, uh, a, a beautiful presence that he brings to ministry. And I think that we're all going to be able to witness that joy that he brings. And it's going to be contagious. And uh, I agree. Are you going to the confirmation tomorrow? I, I don't think so, but I'm going to the reception afterwards today. <laughs> the are reception you? today, yes. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. Look, let's witness some of the. The, the, the joy and actually it's a spirit of prayer that is prayer of gratitude that infects the entire community of faith here present at the Cathedral of St. Joseph right now. Just watching Archbishop Blair and Bishop Bentoncourt together right now is just a beautiful image of, it just I think symbolizes hope for our future, healing, and just continued faith. Truly. They make a nice couple, don't you think? I don't know <laughs> if I put it in those words, <laughs> oh, but I, I yeah. think you're right. I know exactly what you mean. Um, in terms they're of going to shepherding be, us. They're yes, going they're to be a, a great team mm -hmm. working together on behalf of the faith community of the Archdiocese of Hartford. And as we see many of the, the deacons and the priests exit the cathedral now. Archbishop Cronin just walking off our screen. Who just celebrated his 50th anniversary Can as a bishop. Can you imagine it? And I was thinking of that. Incredible. Now, now if, if Bishop Betancourt was to celebrate his 50th anniversary, he would be 98, 98 years older old. Older than Archbishop Cronin. Yes. Yeah. So that just shows to go you that <laughs> Archbishop Archbishop Cronin Was became it? a baby pre a baby bishop. Yeah, you're right. At such a young young age. I didn't do the math until now. You're absolutely Early 40s. right. Early mm -hmm. forties. that? And uh, the priests process out. And for those viewers that are watching who have not visited the cathedral, the mother church of our archdiocese, I certainly encourage them to do so, especially during Christmas, which is such a beautiful um, time in our cathedral. It's absolutely gorgeous, the stained glass windows, and our choir is one of the best. As a matter of fact, you know, we could invite them to be here for Christmas celebration. We should do that right now. All right. Everybody's invited. All right, everybody, come for Christmas. Yes. We'll have Christmas together, and then you can invite Maria and I to your home <laughs> for Christmas dinner. I would love that. Also, we should promote our uh, 175th anniversary mass that is taking place here on November 28th. And Father, I can't remember if it's an early mass or, or an afternoon mass like this one, but it's November I 28th. It's, I believe it's at 2 o'clock. It's at 2 o'clock like this yeah. one was. Yes. So, and we, we probably will carry that Mass as well live on television that day. But what a, a joyous occasion today has been. A joyful journey from priest to bishop. The Mass has ended, but the celebration continues for our new bishop. And I encourage everybody to go to the archdioceseofhartford.org website for pictures of today's beautiful ceremony. And we want to take this opportunity to, to thank all of you. Thank you for tuning in and watching this beautiful presentation. We uh, appreciate your presence and your prayers as well for our new bishop. And we want to thank those who are in Minnesota watching as well and across the globe on the internet. I want to thank our broadcast partners for sure, WCTX, MyTV9, 
for providing live coverage of this ordination of Bishop Battencourt, and also WCCT-TV for facilitating a replay of this entire presentation. And uh, we want to thank our people at WJMJ Radio, Catholic Radio, where faith meets life. It was broadcast on Radio Live as well. So there were so many avenues by which people could join us for this glorious celebration today, the celebration of the Eucharist. And thank you, Maria, especially for uh, joining me as co-host on this special coverage today. Well, it was a pleasure. Your insights are incredible. It was I appreciate a pleasure that. spending time with you, Father. Well, we thank have to we have to do this more often. What I do you think say? So. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Well, thank you to to all of you and and. Uh, as I'd like to say to you and to your family and friends, have a rainbow day. So important. Many blessings. <laughs>